weren't let the sun go off. So we see the gifts that God has given to the church. And they are listed right in these verses. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. They were not the only gifts, but 1 Corinthians tells us that God also gave other gifts to the church. Um, teachers, um, miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. We'll talk about those later, but right now we are focusing on Ephesians chapter 4 and 11 as we're going through our series. We talked about the role of the apostle, how that is the highest calling. We've talked about the role of the prophet, and now today we are going to begin taking, taking a look at the calling of an evangelist. And it would help if I get on the right set of notes. So when we look at the title of evangelist, it's not like the title of apostle or prophet. Because really, if we want to sit down and do a Bible study, if we would hop on our computer and power Bible, whatever program you use, and type in the word prophet, we could have all kinds of hits on it. Hundreds of verses would probably come up. And we type in the word apostle. We probably have at least 50 verses come up with the word apostle in it. So it makes it more to dive into. But when it comes to the calling of the evangelist, the word evangelist, evangelist, both the singular and the plural form, are only found in three verses of the entire Bible. If someone would please find these passages and we'll split them up. Someone find Acts 21 and verse 8. Acts 21, 8. And if someone, well, Ephesians 4, 11 was already read, so if someone else would find 2 Timothy 4, 5. 2 Timothy 4, 5. And then we'll just make sure we're all on the same page. Whoever has Acts 21 8, just go ahead and read that. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist which was one of the seven in the boat with him. And we'll talk more about this passage later, but here we have the title of Evangelist. How about 2 Timothy 4 5? Since watch thou in all things and your afflictions, be a work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So in Acts 21, we have mention of an evangelist, Philip, 2 Timothy 4 5, we have mention of the work of the ministry. And then in Ephesians chapter 4 11, as we've already read this morning, we find it listed right in with the gifts that Christ has given to the church. So those are the three verses where the word evangelist or evangelists are listed. So where does the gift fall in the ranking? And we look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. We find that the very highest calling is that of the apostle. The second highest calling is that of the prophet. But, I'm sorry, if we 
we are basing it off 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, we find that the apostle calling is first, the second, barely, the second most important or highest calling is prophet, but evangelist is not listed in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. So what it comes down to is the apostle, office of the apostle is the greatest, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, but the office of the evangelist is not different, is not listed here. But what it comes down to is what we do know this is it doesn't matter rank of importance. What it comes down to is has God called you to do this? And when it comes down to the calling of the evangelist, it really doesn't matter if it's the greatest calling or the least calling, uh, important calling. The fact of the matter is he has a role to play in God's kingdom. And it is a special calling that God has placed on that plate. And when we look at callings, do you remember when a calling is placed on an individual's life? When did Jeremiah say that he was called? He was called from his mother's womb. So a person's calling is placed on their life from the very, very beginning. But the thing is, not everyone has the same call. We pray that by the words of the Apostle Paul, where he talked about not everyone's the hand, not everyone can be the head, but all members of the body work together for the same purpose. The callings are the same way. And the thing is, when it comes down to it, is what calling is God, has God placed on your life, and what calling has he placed on my life? And we are we doing everything to fulfill that calling? Because it's really up to the individual to embrace the gifts, to embrace the talents, and to embrace the calling that God has given to them. So what about the word evangelist? The English word evangelist appears in two verses of the scripture, and we have already mentioned the word evangelist. The plural form appears in one verse. Now, when we're doing a Bible study, you know me, I like to dive deep. I'll dive into the Word, I'll tear it apart and put it back together again. But I like to know what is God speaking to us through His Word. When we look at the Greek word for evangelist, it comes from, and I'm not going to say the word, it's there in your notes. And it sounds a little like, I'm assuming, like, um, eugelist. But regardless, when we get into the meaning of it, it has one meaning. There's not multiple meanings for the word evangelist to try to say, well, it could be this or it could be that. But there is only one definition according to Strong's Hebrew Dictionary for that Hebrew word. And that is a preacher of the gospel. So what is the work of the evangelist? In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, we find Paul writes of the work of the evangelist. So when we're looking at the Word of God, who is Paul writing to in 2 Timothy? Who is the letter intended for? It was intended for Timothy. Just like the letter to the uh, Philemon was meant for Philemon, the letter to the Hebrews was meant for Hebrews, uh, Corinthians was written to the church at Corinth. So Paul was writing to Timothy. Was Timothy an evangelist? Timothy, they say he was the pastor of the church of Ephesus. 
that may have been true for a while, but when you look at Timothy and his connection with Paul, Paul had him going to this church, he had him going here, he had him going there. So it was almost like he was more of an overseer of several churches. So is it possible that Timothy did the work of the evangelist? Well, what is the definition of a work of evangelist? What is the definition of an evangelist, I should say? Is simply a preacher of God's word. With that being said, could everybody do the work of an evangelist? Absolutely. You can do the work. It doesn't mean you have the calling of the evangelist on your life, but you can do the work of evangelist. When we get into callings, there's special anointings that come with them that God gives you the ability or certain gifts or talents for that, or that calling in general. Just like when it comes to a preacher and a teacher, those are a pastor is said to be a teacher, but when it comes to the calling of the teacher and the calling of a pastor, they could be one and the same, or one person could have both callings, but there's different anointings that come with it. The teacher is the one who dives into the work, and God gives them the ability to be able to separate and put things back together. So when we're looking at the work of the evangelist, Anybody can do that. It's not the calling of evangelists, but anybody can do the work of evangelists. Should we be doing the work of an evangelist? Absolutely. Do we have any scripture to back up that we should be doing? It's not in your notes. I'm sorry. I, I stray sometimes. I come back, but I... What verse instructs us to be preachers of the gospel. You don't even have to know the reference. I'm trying to pull here a little bit. Exactly it, Mom. Mark 16, 15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And when we look at that, it wasn't a suggestion, but rather it was a command. It was a statement. In fact, we went through that um, definition through Merriam-Webster's dictionary months, <coughs> weeks ago, if not months ago, on a commission, how we are to go out in the authority of someone to do something that they have empowered us to. So is Christ giving not just a command to the church, to his followers, but is him also bestowing his power and authority upon him? So, yes. The church, while everyone may not have the calling of an evangelist, everyone can do the work of the evangelist. And the work of the evangelist is simply to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We've all been in church probably for quite a while, and we've heard some of different speakers. Are all, pastor, uh, are all preachers the same? No, not all preachers preach the same. Maybe somebody that claims to be a preacher sounds more like a teacher. <clears throat> they get up and they'll teach. It's not gung-ho preaching, and I'm not doing for lack of better terminology, the old huh, huh, after every sentence. You know what I'm talking about. But get but getting right in there and preaching. I mean, there are people that can go in on a fire, and then there's other people that preach, but they get up and teach. It doesn't mean the anointing's not there. But then there's other people who might get up to preach, but they're more of an exhort. You know, they might not go deep into the word. They might not uh, do the huh, for lack of better terminology. You know, really in there and just roll and roll and roll. But that doesn't mean that they're not anointed. The same thing is true with each one of us. No one of us are the same. We all don't all talk the same. We all don't have the same color. But yet we all have managed to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And while we may have preachers getting behind the pulpit and preaching, depending on a city, it might be more of a rarity anymore, but people standing up preaching in the street corner, but there are people that go into all the world and preach the gospel in the aspect of, do you go to church anywhere? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Why don't you let me show you some verses on how you can accept Jesus Christ? 
It doesn't mean that that person's not anointed. It does not mean that that person isn't doing the work for God because they're doing the work of evangelists. They're just doing it in their own way. They're still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everyone can do the work of an evangelist. Everyone is commanded to do the work of the evangelist in the sense that the evangelist is a preacher of Christ. In that sense, we are all supposed to be preacher, uh, preachers of Jesus Christ. The work of the evangelist is to preach Jesus Christ, Him crucified, and we cannot forget the third most important aspect of it because it's what all of Christianity hinges on, and that is the resurrection. Would someone please read Acts 2.36, Acts 2.36, and if you don't mind, flip it over to 4.10, Acts 4.10 at the same time, and I'll find 1 Corinthians. Acts 2.36. If you have that, go ahead and read it. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom we have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So you have made the same Jesus, Lord, that you have crucified, Lord and Christ. What does 410 state of Acts mom? Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom we crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand here before you all. So he was made whole because Jesus Christ, whom they crucified and resurrected, because you cannot forget the resurrection. That is what Christianity hinges on. And then finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. What did the Apostle Paul write? For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So the gospel message is Jesus Christ crucified and resurrected with the power of the Holy Ghost. That is what the gospel message is that we are all supposed to spread. So what is the mission of the evangelist? The mission of the evangelist is what we've been talking about this whole time. Mark 16 and 15, to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The mission of the evangelists would also be verified by the same thing that every other Christian would be. Does someone want to read Mark 16, 17, and 18? Mark 16, 17, and 18. Mark 16, 17, and 18. So signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. <coughs> Are you one of Jesus Christ's own? We are to preach the gospel, but I will tell you one thing. God will verify his messenger. People may come against you. People may doubt you. But they are in God's hands. That is not for us to worry about. When it comes down to it at the end of the day, we are to do exactly what God commands us to do. And he said that signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Why should signs and wonders follow them that believe? Because signs and wonders are not because of who you are, and they are not because of who I am. They are because of who God is and who Jesus Christ is. And the reason they follow us is because they verify that we are gods. Can the devil work miracles? The devil can work miracles. But... God will trump him every single time. Okay. Going off the notes again, Acts chapter 9, I believe. It's either 8 or 9. I think it's 9. The revival in Samaria. You have, if I remember correctly, Simon Magnus, the sorcerer. He did signs and wonders. But when revival broke out and God started working, he realized that what Philip had that we're going to talk about here in a little bit 
at something that he did, and he thought he could buy. See, the power that the devil gives comes with a cost. He tried to give money, but you realize that over in voodoo nations, they'll sacrifice fingers for spells to be cast, toes. The devil's power comes with a price. But God's power is free to the believer, not because of who you are, not because of who I am, but because of who he is. And if we are a child of the living king, he's going to verify that with signs and wonders. And it will trump anything the devil will throw out there. I heard an account years ago about, I think it was a missionary that was on a foreign land. Well, this person that practiced witchcraft came out and he started levitating to prove how powerful his God was. Well, the missionary didn't know what to do because he's been challenged to this duel because the sorcerer commanded him to come out and prove that his God was real. He didn't know what to do, so he just started saying the name of Jesus. And you know that sorcerer came down a little bit? He said the name of Jesus a little bit more, and he came down a little bit more until finally he was on the ground. The power that God gives, the signs and wonders, they're not to show that we are anything great, but they are to show who God is and that he is true. <coughs> and that he's the one living God. And if you are truly his, though, he will verify that you are his. If anybody questions you or comes against you, God will prove it through signs and wonders. It may not be right then and right there, but he'll let people know that you are his. Moving on for the sake of time. The mission of the evangelist is to have the desire of Christ. What is the desire of Christ? Well, in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, it is this. But he that lacketh these things is blind. It would help if I gave him the right chapter. So, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 again. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as men count slack, but is long suffering to us, to us, Lord. And this is the mission of Christ. This is the desire of Christ. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is the purpose of the evangelist, to preach the gospel. That is the purpose of the work of evangelists, to preach the gospel. It, is, it should be the desire of everyone who is Christ because the closer we get to God, the more we will hear, hear his heartbeat. And what is the heartbeat of God? It is exactly this. That none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why did Jesus Christ come to this earth and die? His whole purpose was to seek and to save those that were lost. So let's talk about an evangelist here for a moment. In Philippians, Philippians, Acts chapter 21, 8 and 9. Acts 21, 8 and 9. Someone will please read that. Scripture. He has four daughters that prophesy. 
So when we look at Philip, he had a very godly household. He was a Christian, his four daughters were a Christian, and they were all used of God. Where does Philip come from? We first see Philip really being mentioned in Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. Acts 6, 5, if someone would please read that.
and the prophesying the word of God. So he had a household that loves God. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13, the Bible states this, in concerning the office of the bishop, which we could also say is deacon, council member, but 1 Timothy 3.13, the Bible states, for, thee, for they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree, degree and great fullness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Can we say that Philip used his office of a deacon, that it was well purchased and of a good degree in his life? I would say that is true. But the question comes back, even though this is for the role of the deacon or office, can we say that about our own lives? Whatever calling God has placed in our own life, the work of the evangelist that we're supposed to be doing in our own life, when we stand before God, would this verse be applicable to us? That whatever God had for us, we purchased it well, we used our talents well, we used our gifts well, and because of that, we were left with a good degree. We were known that we were a Christian. We can go along with that song that states, May all who come behind us find us faithful. That is what this verse kind of is hinting at to some degree, uh, to some aspect. Could we say that at the end of our life? Can we say the word of the Apostle Paul? I have fought the good fight. I have kept the core, uh, faith. I have kept my course. What, can we truly say that? Because really, that's, the, that's what this verse is. We have kept pushing on. We have kept fighting. Anything that God has had for us, we have grabbed on. We have embraced it. We have sat down and prayed and fasted that God revealed our calling to for our life. If we didn't come that way, that when God told us the calling for the, our life that he has, that we embraced it wholeheartedly. Said, God, not my will, but thine be done. We sought God and no more. What gifts? Have you placed in my life? Some may come out pretty easily. Others, we may have to say, Lord, what other gifts are there that I'm not aware of? And have we embraced those gifts for the glory of the kingdom of God? Not everyone is called to be an evangelist. But everyone is called to do the work of evangelists. And the question is, are we willing to do that? There's, I can't remember who made the statement. But the phrase goes, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. What are we doing for the kingdom of God? Is the devil not out there working? Absolutely, the Bible says that. He knows that his days are short. He's out there working. Those people that you're supposed to be reaching, but we're just sitting there, he's out there trying to reach them. If you don't believe me, flip through the channels of your TV. And what you'll see is campaign of the devil. Flip to the next channel. Channel. Campaign of the devil to try and reach somebody. Next channel. Campaign of the devil to try and reach somebody. Flip through your radio station as you're going home. What are you going to be hearing? The campaign of the devil to try and reach another soul. To get him from the grasp of God. What? Flip to the next channel. What are you going to hear probably? The campaign of the devil to try and reach another soul and drag him from the kingdom of God. Her from the kingdom of God. These are people that we're supposed to be trying to reach. These are people that we need to be going out and telling them about Jesus Christ. But every time we sit and we do nothing, the devil's out there working hard trying to get them. The great commandment, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Are you willing to do the work of an evangelist? Even if you are not called to be an evangelist, are you willing to do the work of an evangelist? Nothing in the scripture reveals that Timothy had the calling of an evangelist on his life. But Paul didn't tell him to go be an evangelist. He didn't tell him to go get the anointing from God and seek and pass to get it. He said, but that calling might not have been on Timothy's life. Timothy was not commanded by Paul to go out and get something that he wasn't or be somebody that he wasn't. But he said, do the work of evangelists. If we may apply that to our own lives, Maybe we don't have the calling of evangelists in our life, and maybe we do. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter if we do or we don't. Are we willing to do the work of the evangelist? Because souls are dying, 
And just like the devil's time is running out, so is ours. And it's not just a matter of fighting the time clock with age. Jesus said to work while it is yet day, because night is yet coming. There's coming a point in time when regardless of age, the rapture is going to, be, is going to happen. And then the work period is going to be over for us as a church. Are we willing to do the work of an evangelist? Let us bow our hands in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and will do. Now, Lord, we thank you that your God who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move as it so desires. I pray, Lord, that you anoint the song leader and the musicians, Lord, as they lead us in the song, should have us to sing, as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords. Anoint the speaker's mind and his heart and his lips today, Lord. Let your words flow forth, Lord, and give him a special blessing as well. And anoint our minds and our hearts to receive it with gladness, that we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, that we may apply it to our lives. And also anoint our hearts and our minds that we would be in one mindset, one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, because you alone are holy and worthy. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 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 Yeah.